Hey guys, it's Rocco here. Welcome back to our weekly Lunar Classic Spaces. Today's video, guys, we really go in deep. What is Jewish protocol? Rexy asks some really good questions, beginner friendly questions to understand what is lending borrowing protocol, how it all works. We talk about leverage trading as well. We talk about everything Lunar Classic. We have some guests talking about Lunar Classic memes. So enjoy the content guys make sure you hit that like button just comment below luna classic hi thank you it really helps the algorithm out i make weekly video short videos where you can get everything that you need to know but if you love luna classic you want to make it in the bull market make sure you watch this longer format video where we go into a lot of detail everything that's happening in the luna classic make sure you watch the video till the end if you have any questions do comment below and i'll catch you guys soon with another weekly update thank you very much evening everyone hope you're all doing very well welcome to another weekly long spaces we've got jewish here on time today and um, we've got rexy joining us later as well so hopefully we'll have a good spaces lots to talk about not just in luna classic but outside as well lunatic hi how's your day been hey rocco i'm doing fine i had a nice weekend um happy to be back Lots of exciting stuff are going to happen for Juris next week, I hope. So, uh, yeah, good to speak to you. How was your weekend? Um, it's been a busy week, man. Um, I've not uh, actually got not been involved with Luna Classic as much this week. I've been trading a lot of soul memes, as you guys have seen. Um, I don't like shilling other coins on Lunk Spaces, so I won't mention them. Um, and I also had a bad news about I lost a Phantom wallet. Um, so that's been a bit sad. I was trying, I, I didn't manage to get it back. It was my mistake, really. And um, they had an issue with their upgrade. Um, and yeah, I fumbled some bags as well. I got in and then I thought I made money selling it for like 10, 20 mil. And then um, that coin went to like 150 million. So I dropped, I left a lot of money on the table, which is which is a bit annoying. Um, apart from that, I had a few conversations. I think I sent you some AI stuff I've been working on. Um, and um, yeah, just talking to some meme coins, maybe I need to delve more into the meme mania, not just for Luna Classic, but just in general, because those stuff seems to just go crazy. We've seen it with even Litecoin, one of the biggest coins in crypto, or X biggest, if you want to call it, still has a massive community. They're rebranding to Luna, um, Luna Classic, they're rebranding as a meme coin, which is crazy to think. So it's been a busy week, uh, some bad news, but hey, man, it's crypto, we, we move on. At least you didn't lose your wallet to your ex, so there's always something positive about it. <laughs> yeah, like well, somebody else did in this space. I'm not going to mention who it was, but... Uh... Ex's wallet, oh, that's really bad. I mean, for me, it was basically, I had a hot wallet, right? Because I, I was just trading memes, so I just moved some money, um, and it was on my phone. And then um, Phantom had an issue with the upgrade, so I didn't have a, my seed phrases and stuff saved back up because i was like oh it's just a hot wallet i'll trade and then obviously i was using it on my phone more and more with the meme coins and what they with the upgrade when you updated it they just deleted the whole wallet um and yeah lots of people lost even more i mean it wasn't my main wallet otherwise i'd be crying man but it's still sad like so you put a lot of hard work in, in making money um but yeah <laughs> it still hurts even though i've not lost it to my ex yeah, I understand. But uh, I can tell you that one hurts the most. I would love to have lost the keys instead, but uh, <laughs> this is what yeah. it is, I guess. It's been a fun week. So yeah, I might need your guys' update. So uh, you and Rexy to update more on Luna Classic. I've been slightly busy with other stuff as well. Um, but yeah, we'll, we won't show those on the <laughs> Luna Classic spaces. But Rexy, how you been, mate? Yeah, hi all. It's, uh, yeah, just listening to what you said there. It's uh it's, it has been a busy week, hasn't it? And uh, I guess from a a fumbling point of view, I think anybody that fumbles into a profit ain't doing too bad. So, uh, you know, don't kick yourself too much. But uh, I know what it's like. I mean, at one point, I think I had about 1% of all the lunk um, when, when you can only buy about $9 at a time. So maybe I fumbled quite a lot there. Um, but, you know, as long as you end up better off you're not fumbling too bad, are you? Let's face it. Um, and I think that's that's the story to be had with with everybody that invests in tech. You know, we've all got, um, we've all had opportunities where if we'd maybe hung on, we could have done better. But then if we'd maybe sold a bit earlier, we could have done so. Uh, yeah, cool. But a uh, lot been going on in the ecosystem. I've just um, been contacted by um, uh, a major kind of publisher in the uh, the community as well, which um, 
if that proves to be legit, I mean, that could be massive for our ecosystem as well. I mean, they've got 3 million followers. So we'll see where that goes. Yeah, I think you you gave me a teaser. I think that will be good for well, Luna Classic and Terraport's marketing. Okay, guys, so we can start getting into it, I guess, with what's been happening. Crypto update, Luna Classic, then we can start shilling juries, Terra and Terra Casino and all that good stuff later on. Um, uh, Bitcoin, again, went crazy. Um, it's been a bit, this week's been sort of the comeback for OG coins. We saw Litecoin rebranding um, to meme coin and is hit almost hundred dollars. So it had a, um, almost like a 50% pump more than a, uh, sorry, almost two X. We've seen XRP going absolutely parabolic. There's rumors of XRP being linked with, um, Donald Trump's administration. I don't know if these rumors are legit, but there's been rumors that I've been seeing is two X is still pumping. I got a background 80 sent at uh, cardano so all the og dino coins from 2017 2018 seems to be pumping so it's been quite a bullish week it's pulling back slightly but you know bitcoin's in new all-time highs so any dips in doge or all these coins you can um look to ape uh, luna classic is moving as well so we've seen luna classic break out um that key level of not point triple zero one um hoping that it heads towards my my first or well, next target was around 40% move up. Um, it is pulling back now. Um, I haven't bought more on this pullback, but the last breakout I did buy, I, I posted it. Um, so yeah, hopefully we see some follow through in Luna Classic as well. I guess that's pretty much the update. It's just full on mania in crypto. Coins are pumping and I mean, meme coins have just gone absolutely crazy. Um, I mean, uh, the one that I mentioned earlier in the spaces was Bert. I shielded it on Twitter at 1 million and it was like a cabal coin, I think. They had like lots of whales and um, yeah, it just went to 150 million, which is absolutely crazy in a couple of days. So meme coins are going crazy. I hoped we can push something in the Luna Classic community as well. I'll have a chat with Rexy and uh, LL69, maybe do like top five coins to buy. Um, meme coins to buy on Luna Classic. I think that might be helpful on YouTube. And we've got other YouTubers um, that support us, like Bleeves, that we, that works with Rexy and Terra Casino. Maybe if we all push it, we can bring some Luna Classic hype um, to the meme coin section because that would really help our chain. And with the burn tax as well, any on-chain activity will help burn Lunk. So that's a bit of an update with crypto market for me. Um, Jewish, um, your thoughts on the market in general in crypto? Uh, well, to be honest, I was caught up with Juris stuff this week. Um, lots, a lot going on in private chats. Um, so, and in uh, chats with Kay and uh, Dev chat, we I had talks with Frag about the protocol development. Even though we didn't start, uh, we had to talk a lot about uh, how, like he's kind of preparing to start. So we had some discussions there. I talked to a CX, um, but yeah. I didn't really follow up Luna Classic too much. I'm, I have on my agenda to read about the uh, ceramic repack proposal because there was lots of stuff going on, and I uh, was loosely following it. Uh, but there seems to be some, some, yeah, some. Uh, I don't know how to call it. Some uh, different opinions from different people on it, whether it's good, whether it's bad, uh, some stuff going on there. And I didn't want to give an opinion before having full understanding of what they actually want to do. Um, so yeah, and uh, about crypto space in general, uh, man, I have been late. Um, I transferred some Bitcoin into a corporate balance sheet, uh, which I received in private. So I split it up. Some of it is on my private balance sheet just for holding it for forever more or less hopefully um and uh, i moved some into the llc to do some trading but i was completely caught up and i was like uh, uh making some charts looking at some stuff going on but i didn't ape in yet so i'm keen to have a chat with you later or you can give some opinions on uh, what you think is good or bad i have my my old uh, cmc watch list my trading view coins um some of them already pumped some of them i think are still undervalued or like uh um behind schedule so to say um lunk as well by the way i think lunk is going to do well uh in future so maybe i'm keen on adding some there uh, not sure yet cool sounds good uh, rexy your thoughts on bitcoin and crypto then we'll come on to lunk after well i think the ball runs started isn't it um 
I think most people would kind of agree with that now, although, you know, it probably started 18 months ago. Um, well, yeah, no, it's it's been epic, isn't it? I mean, I got into Bitcoin this last time. I think it was 19,000, I think I bought it at. Um, so that's kind of gone all right. Um, yeah, it's... Yeah, I mean, it's it's just been epic, isn't it? I mean, I've, you know, some of my holdings, I hold a lot of stuff. I really do. Um, you know, I've got some variety there. I mean, XRP was something I got into, I think, when it was around about 30 cents. Same with HBAR. Um, what else have I been? I've been in some of the kind of memes on Solana over the last few weeks as well, just because everybody seemed to be talking about it. And I thought, well, I can't really comment about these things unless I've actually had a bit of a go. So I thought, well, I better trade a few, just see how they're going. So, you know, I've had something like, uh, what is it, Happy on there. Um, I think this rock token as well, that just makes me kind of chuckle. Um, there's kind of a nice bit of imagination that's gone into the marketing there. So, yeah, I kind of, I kind of wanted to see if I can take some learning from that to help promote tokens within our ecosystem and uh, you know see what works and what's transferable and so on but uh yeah it's it's been epic i mean no doubt the elections in america have had something to do with it um obviously that's that's pretty bullish um it'd be interesting to see how trump's presidency kind of unfolds in terms of its impact on places like ukraine and europe and so on um, you know, there's maybe there's maybe opportunities there for him to help draw that war to a close without withdrawing support from Ukraine. Just reflect on some of the things he's done in the past, but you know, we'll we'll have to see. But all these things will have a a, a massive impact, won't they, on the markets? Um, and I think, you know, I've been listening to some you know posts from Michael Saylor uh, and also Rob Ball and. Yeah, I think the bullish. I mean, I think Bitcoin could probably, you know, easy go up another five or ten x from here. I was read, I was listening to something from was it um, Michael Saylor reckons it can do like four hundred and fifty x from here. I mean, even Roll Paul reckoned, you know, the the crypto market should reach a hundred trillion within about five or ten years. I mean, if you look at all that, even if you got another couple of um, highs and lows to kind of experience within or bulls and you know bears within that time um yeah that's going in the right direction isn't it cool yeah i guess with bitcoin trump coming is really bullish uh, we touched on it last time like he is literally it's not just trump again i, I don't want to talk about u.s politics being a <laughs> being an englishman but there's a is it Senate? They've got like huge power, and people that is selecting the, the people that are going to be making the laws, like sacking Gary Gensler, and all this stuff are going to be even more bullish than just like what he's going to say and do. And he's got his own DeFi project. That's what what's pushing XRP and ADA as well for him, linking with those stuff. Um, so yeah, it's it's really bullish times. It's time to to lock in definitely. And um, let's move on to Luna Classics. I'll give you guys my updates. I talked on the price. We've had a breakout of you know killed a zero as people say and we've broken out of uh, the not point triple zero one which is bullish. Um in terms of on chain news um there's, there was a request for coin market cap dashboard uh, to transfer it from uh, to transfer it to all nodes from tfl so that has passed so that's bullish i guess we can have our telegram discord links on coin market cap um terra classic not terra so that's uh, a positive the uh, proposal for the changing of gas so there was a, a update from Stratco uh, changing how the the reverse charge tax mechanism he called it, which was a an upgrade from tax to gas, which will help developers from Cosmos and other wider DApps to move on to Luna Classic has passed. So there's been few positive upgrades on the Luna Classic chain. Um, there's a post from Vegas about USTC uh, staking. I think that is not um, a repick proposal, but it will support repick proposals going forward. Um, he joined the spaces last week uh, to talk uh, to talk with Leonardo's USCC plan. Um, so that's positive. Um, I'll try to get him on maybe next week and we can talk about USTC staking because any bullish narrative we can link to USCC is going to really help in the bull run. Um, going back to the Leonardo's USTC again, listen to yes, uh, last week's spaces. We had Leonardo, Vegas, Redline. We went into a lot of detail 
on on his repeat proposal plan it was more like an economic update like what he wants to do then rather than going into all the details that's been the main backlash uh, but the um said so they'll be updating a white paper version three uh, from november for next week um so that's going to be good to see and um I've, as i've mentioned before luna classic for it to do well even if we can't repeg ustc getting a narrative going would be really really important so yeah um anyone that's working on ustc repeg i'm happy to support them um from a marketing point of view um apart from that on chain stuff you know juris has had a bullish week which is good to see our own project push in uh terra's pulled back slightly but with the selenium airdrop should be doing well cat with hat with me rexy has been really trying to push um, if you guys have ideas um we can push meme coins uh, let us know maybe we let nicholas speak slightly as well he's got some meme coin projects um nicholas do you want to jump on now hey <clears throat> what's going on guys yeah oh well, i'm actually um, i just want to circle back on what you were saying on crypto in the us uh i posted in the comments but donald trump wants to eliminate capital gains tax on all us based cryptos so that's why you are seeing hbar and cardano and all those companies pumping right now um, so he's, he's really trying to bring, you know, crypto, uh, adoption, uh, to the United States. And, you know, when we think about that, you know, crypto, only about 30% of the world is into crypto and, uh, you know, probably within five to 10 years, or probably more around like 70 to hundred percent of the world are going to be into crypto. So I think we're in the right place. I think we are holding our tokens and we, we just keep doing what we're doing. And uh, on the Luna Classic end, you know, we, we've been burning a lot of uh, Luna Classic and, and USTC with Cookie Token. But we've uh, we've also got some ideas here for a potential repeg plan. It's a, it's a similar, it's, a, it's like a, a, a double repeg plan because what we're doing, what we're wanting to do is we're creating a new stable coin on a layer two of Luna Classic that's going to be a <clears throat> gold pegged stable coin so instead of being a fiat peg stable coin we're going to make a gold peg stable coin uh, cookie token has opened a pair with pax g and brought it over to luna classic so we've made that bridge uh, we've opened that bridge up so people can purchase gold on luna classic with luna classic tokens with cookies uh, we've also opened a bridge over to shiba inu so brought over a nice meme coin and we're, we're actually looking to bridge over a lot of the meme coins uh, to Luna Classic to, to just facilitate, uh, you know, those blockchains to, to come build on Lunk. You know, there's a lot of people that hold those tokens and, uh, you know, you can swap them back and forth and make some nice coins at the same time of generating on-chain volume. You know, a lot of the stuff we're doing on Cookie is, is you know, focused on-chain because that's what funds community pools and that's what funds taking rewards and what's, that's what burns Luna Classic. And, you know, building this uh gold peg stable coin you know uh we would peg it to cookie and we would have you know we're, we're looking to integrate ai um <clears throat> auto adjustment of pools and and collateral so the ai will be dealing with all of the trading and adjustment of oracle pools and of oracle sorry and and everything else so that would uh, take the human error element out of it as well as to have, uh, to have safeguards in place and everything, and once again, all those, all that volume would be would be generated on Cookie. So once again, right now, three percent of of Cookie goes to burn. In USTC, we are um, going to transition to probably a two percent tax because to make this stable coin uh, on layer two. Uh, well, one of the reasons we're doing on layer two is to you know. We don't want to avoid gover governance, but it's just it's it's tough to build things sometimes on layer one. So we figured let's build something on layer two, and eventually, maybe if we want to try to bridge bridge it into layer one, then we can have that option once you know it's been fully built and and, and launched and and functional. So um, so that's what we're doing. But you know, part of the tax is going to be to to go to to purchase gold. Um, physical gold and and actual package G as well that we're going to be holding in our banks. We're going to collateralize um, the token 120 to 150 percent. So we, we will have the gold in reserves at all times. So uh, and you know as our gold reserves grow, we will mint more more of these stable coins and people will be able to purchase them more and more. 
you know, we figured we'd start small. We'll start with, you know, a couple thousand and eventually move our way up to 10,000 to 100,000 million of these. So that's the plan. So that's that's our repeg plan, the plan to, to have, you know, an extra utility to Luna Classic, bringing a, a stable coin, that, you know, in this case, we're probably be pegging to one gram of gold, so it's around 88 to, you know, it fluctuates between anywhere from 88 to $100, you know. So uh, we would have it at around $100 stable coin, which, would, which is also different from what's available on the market right now. So we're really looking to, uh, to differentiate ourselves and give a reason for people to come on chain and come trade. That's awesome, man. Have you, take part. Sorry, yeah. have you made a post on that, um, that repeg with, backed by gold? I've not. <laughs> honestly you guys are like the second people to know i've told the people in my in my telegram group and the frg universe and you guys are the second to know and actually the third to know because we told diamond hands group yesterday but we haven't spoke too much about the details but but this is kind of this is the general idea um so we will be we'll be you know working towards that i've even i've spoken to strathcole to help me with the ai part and he's 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 a uh, kind of um told me where to go about this and how we're going to, how we can attack this. I'm, you know, I'm going to need more of an AI specialist in this case. I, I, I know one, so he can help me out with building this, uh, building this AI. But, um, yeah, cause I think it, it is a crucial part of, of the deal, you know, is having the AI be, being able to, to just monitor the prices and, and trade back and forth. And once again, create this on chain volume and create this burn tax for USDC at the same time. So, um, so yeah, we've evolved from being just a meme coin to becoming something much bigger, right? So, and it's very cool because I started in a year ago with the FRG University, and we knew nothing. I knew nothing about building. I knew nothing about development. I knew nothing about coding. And like, it just within a year, just getting my hands dirty and doing it, we've learned so much and we've grown so much, and it's just fantastic to see all these projects come to life. No, that's awesome, mate. Well, when you do post more details, I'm happy to, you know, talk to you in more detail on the spaces or um, share it as well. Because yeah, it's really good stuff that you're working on. Were you working on cookies or FRG? Because I remember you showed cookie last time, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, cookie is part of the FRG universe. We, FRG universe is is a place where we created where investors can invest in, in tokens that are safe. You know, and so there's been so many can scams on Lunk that we decided to create a space where. You know, tokens that are part of this ecosystem are, are actual builders and people you can meet and talk to and, and, and video chat every night if you would like. So uh, so this is why, you know, we, we're part of this ecosystem, but this is kind of like the mindset behind FRG. But yeah, Cookie is part of that ecosystem. Awesome, man. Well, I'll be, I said it earlier, I'm planning to do like a top five Lunk meme coins to buy. I did it in bull market last time, not not with Luna Classic meme coins, but other meme coins, which was quite popular. So yeah, I'll definitely include one of your coins, especially with all the work that you're doing on the repick stuff. I appreciate you, man. Check out, uh, you know, Food Token as well. It's our humanitarian token. We help out farmers all across the world. It's really, we're doing a lot of good stuff on Lunk, man. It's it's growing every every single day. And uh, I, I encourage you guys to, to look into those projects and go meet. What's better than doing your own research is going to meet the project owners. Go ask them questions. You know, challenge their white paper, challenge their tokenomics. It's important. You, you, you need to do that. That's how you, you stay safe in this space. Yeah, definitely. Thank well, you guys for the space for talking, man. Appreciate no it. No worries, mate. Yeah, it's up to you. You can hang around. Uh, but we can we talk about questions and stuff later. So if you want to hang around, you can. And yeah, if you want to send some of the guys of the project owners to come and chill on these spaces, um, it's an open forum for people to come and share what they're building on Luna Classic. So they, they're welcome. But we'll move on to Luna Classic, um, back to Luna Classic. Um, I mentioned a couple of, couple of key updates from this week. Um, another thing I've done is like the liquid staking um, on Terraport. So that's something that's been there for a while, but I think they've not done great marketing. I gave some feedback to Rexy and Man, and um, I have made a video. So if you guys remember last bull market, I think that that's how one of my reasons my channel grew a lot. I used to make this DeFi content, like $100 a day DeFi stuff with, um, started with Luna. I know it didn't end well, but it like did 100x before. And they're also like, um, 
ohm token and uh, there was another token that was a copy of ohm i forgot the name now do you guys remember it just comment below if you do remember there was a copy of ohm token on avalanche that even went crazy and i used to make those contents and they did really well with jewish protocol building a lending borrowing protocol um i'll be able to create content again of what you can do with luna classic on chain um so i've started that chat um creating that content up i've just tagged that post at the top if you guys want to just hit that like share it or just comment just a high comment on youtube it really helps the channel out so yeah i'd appreciate if you guys do that but i think that's my update from luna classic uh, juris have you got anything else to add uh specifically for luna classic or is it like yeah i think i have something to add i'm i can see hexagon right now i think recently they uh, released their wallet for um for ios and uh, the Android one was there, but I wasn't aware that it is there. I actually shared it once uh, months ago, and then I forgot about it. So uh, I think now they have the iOS version, and they um, fixed the bug that was not displaying the Terra token correctly in the search. So um, now everything is up and working. Uh, I use it myself. Um, other than that, uh, Luna Classic specific, I think we talked about everything going on right now. Oh, no, the uh, coin market cap uh, proposal is has passed right Rexy? yes yeah i mentioned that uh, i mentioned that that was positive yeah that's um that's passed and i've been chatting with vegas about that um we're currently filling in the well we've already done this in the past but we're filling in the forms and submitting them again to cmc to get uh Terraport as a dex registered on there which will be absolutely fantastic i mean it's it's something in the past they've tried to charge us 70 grand for um but if vegas can get it on through you know this this wider community initiative for nothing, then that's 70 more grand that can go into development, isn't it? Uh, and also the Terra token, which which will be absolutely epic because, I mean, that helps draw people's attention to everybody that's got um, liquidity pools on on Terraport. And, of course, you know, wider field beyond Terraport, um, it just draws people's attention to Terra Classic, and that's got to be good for everybody, hasn't it? Cool. Thanks, Rexy. Um, Juris Protocol, let's move on to Juris then. I know you've gone full time now uh, working on Juris. What alpha can you share with us? Okay, so uh, first alpha, I think that the one that most people ask about is the dashboard and the IBC bridge. Um, I think it is actually finished. I was told uh, yesterday night. I think, or today in the morning, I don't remember, um, by LeadDev that it's up and running uh, in test version so that we can go and try it out. Uh, everything should be fine. Wallet Connect works for Hexagon and Kepler. Um, I think Hexagon Station mobile support is yet to be added, but desktop uh, support is working. The IBC bridge is integrated. Um, so we are going to... I guess release it next week, like after internal testing. Um, then there is going to be the uh, Shirini airdrop, like the the sweets and candy. That's a Persian thing uh, to celebrate something when it's done. Uh, we will airdrop that stuff, um, like with the official release of the dashboard. Um, I have finished the first um, UI UX meeting with David. Uh, I think we met on Friday um, after releasing the new uh, branding already with the community. So we have the key visual identity, uh, the designs. And now based on that, we are working on a, uh, how do you call that? A one all-in-one app, um, web app, including a website for jurors with the new branding uh, and everything included. Uh, it's going to be the interface for the protocol as well, for lending and borrowing. Um, and it will include the IBC bridge and the dashboard for investors as well. Um, even though the first version of the IBC bridge and dashboard is not branded yet, it just has a nice Juris protocol logo in the top, but the rest is like pretty vanilla. Um, but I asked David to first focus on the landing page and the website part, if possible, 
and uh, also build UI UX, but uh, focus on that because I figured it's good to release it soon. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, in the background, we have been talking to a CX um, and doing some back and forths about uh, possible listing. Uh, the big one that we have been talking to, um, that is going to be delayed because they currently cannot support Terra Classic Layer 2 tokens. I talked with Frank about it. He said it's legit. A lot of uh, CXs have issues because of the, I, f I guess, because of the tech stuff and like other stuff uh, that they need to take care of with Luna Classic and there is not much interest and uh, not much going on, they say. I think it's on us to change it. Uh, but in the meantime, we talked to, to another CEX, which is also, I think, pretty big. I think you would agree, you're in the chat. Um, and we're looking at uh, being able to list with them. So I'm waiting for some uh, responses um, to get confirmation whether they can add uh, Terra Classic projects. Um, they have been very communicative with us. Um, so that's going on. And I have been doing preparation talks with Frag for the development of the smart contracts for the protocol. Um, and even though he didn't start the official coding yet, so that's good, he's not charging me uh, hours yet, but um, he already is putting in hours actually and thinking about stuff, uh, how to do things like we discussed uh, price oracles, we discussed some of the liquidations, uh, liquidation mechanisms. Um, and I think he's reviewing the Git book and like planning stuff for himself right now. Um, so yeah, that's it from Jura's side. And uh, oh, and obviously the the roadmap that everybody asked for, and uh, we have been uh, keen on putting online. But like, I didn't want to put online things that might change. Um, but I think the roadmap is pretty much ready. I'm reviewing reviewing it with uh, K with our Discord admin and like my uh, co-project manager uh, right now um, so that we can release it in a couple of hours uh, for the Git book. That all sounds fantastic. Is it, could I just ask you to do something, um, if you don't mind, if it ain't cheeky. The, uh, I think this space is it's, it's tending to grow and we're getting more and more people in here. It might be useful if you give a bit of a recap of what the uh, the actual purpose of Juris is, you know, for for the non-tech people like myself, that you know, it's all all the technical chat's absolutely fantastic, and it's, it gives me a hard on, but it doesn't actually help me understand things, and there might be some other people like that as well. <laughs> Maybe I can do an intro on the <laughs> shilling part, then Lunatic can can back me up on this. So, what made, I guess, what made Luna successful was Anchor uh, and Mirror Protocol. That 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 aspect was huge and i know ustc was a big part on the 20 percent, but without that even without the anchor protocol and mirror protocol where they're flagship brands so ll69 is trying to bring a, a lending borrowing pro and we, we just say lending borrowing but that's the first version of it there's a lot bigger plans um for jurists uh, that we're planning but it's just the first part of it which would allow people to you know use the protocol borrow lend and it's just increasing on-chain activity and you can it get the rewards from where people want to stake it and you know getting rewards locking up token increasing on-chain activity will help luna classic and a percentage of the fees i forgot the percentage uh jewish uh, llc sun can confirm would also go into fund the community and oracle pool that's an issue for us in luna classic we've you know not been re 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 re-topping it up uh, for lack of a better word uh, jewish protocol will help with that so it's really bullish if you look at the market cap of jewish at the moment compared to Luna Classic, and in the future, we can see a bull market. Our space is still getting, how many people have we got here? 70 people, it's still not, unless we get to 200, we during the bull market, we used to, we had the spaces, Rex, you probably remember, we had 800, 900 um, people listening when we were getting listed on the Binance burn was happening with Vegas and Ed. Um, that's when the bull market happens and bull market hasn't, the FOMO hasn't even started yet. So yeah, that's just like the moon boy talk. I'll let Luna say, give a, um a calm down version so ju just a, a quick one on that um just responding uh in terms of lending and borrowing i'm just thinking about the real basic 
well, real basic. That's that sounds condescending. Um, an entry level investor that's got lots of money, but is too busy, really tied up with the day to day work and generating this money to invest. How can that person generate more income and returns through a lending and borrowing protocol? Give it to me really simply. How, how, how if I was going to put 10 grand into it, how could I turn that 10 grand maybe into 20 grand by through, using a lending borrowing protocol? Uh, well, if you want to put it into 20 grand, uh, just doing passive stuff, it's going to be a little bit hard. Then I think you have to go the DGEN route. Um, but if you want to just uh, have sustainable APR on tokens that are possibly uh, non-stakeable, um, so where you don't have uh, governance, like for example, USDC, um, I think USDC staking is something lots of people ask for, but also coins from uh, other chains. Like, for example, BNB or Solana or whatever, you can bridge to Terra Classic and uh, we could possibly whitelist. So what you do is you basically deposit your assets and uh, into the lending pools and let other people borrow it. The DGENs that actually want to either have on-chain leverage uh, to gamble or if you have people that are running sophisticated strategies, sometimes market makers want to borrow coins. Um, so basically there is two participants there is lenders and there is borrowers uh, the easy thing to do for normal retail is to just lend out their tokens that are idling anyways and not earning anything um, and you can earn certain percent of percent of apr on it uh, and the uh, we cannot show 20 percent apr like uh, anchor did on ust uh, because ours is going to be dynamic and hopefully sustainable based on real interest into borrowing and lending. Um, so in short, simple words, you can just lend out your assets and earn interest on it. That's the simple version. Um, but you can stake juris as well, right? You can get revenue protocols by staking juris. That's the second part, yes. So uh, for people that are holding juris, um, and want to participate in the, um, not in the lending itself, but uh, earn rewards from people that use the protocol. Uh, what they can do is they will be able to stake their jurors into a jurors DAO and then earn a um, certain percent of uh, fees generated by the protocol and the percentage right now is 50%. Uh, I'm discussing with some people whether we should raise it a little bit. Uh, so 50% of the revenue goes to jurors stakers. Um, it's not sufficient to just hold the coin. You will have to stake it actually and lock it for a certain amount of time, similar to uh, how it works with land governance. Um, that makes you a DAO and protocol participant. Uh, you will be un able to earn uh, some of the fees based on your percentage within the DAO. Um, so yeah, that's also a way to to earn profits, earn revenue or rewards based on your jurors holding. So that's why it actually makes sense to have some, buy them cheap and just hold them. And uh, uh, if we or when we pull this off, then uh, staking will come live and staking rewards will be actually coming from sustainable real world usage and not just inflating or minting tokens that sounds fantastic um so so me as a if you like a, as with my investor hat on um i've let's say got i don't know ten thousand euros or whatever it may be and then i kind of put that into your protocol and then you give me five or ten percent or something like that and somebody else could maybe borrow from that and then they could use that to maybe invest in the ecosystem through maybe degen trading or something or other. Is that pretty much it? Uh, yeah, I think that's it. So that's basically how it's going to work. Um, there is a interesting third type of protocol participant, uh, which is the liquidator. Um, because when you do over collateralized borrowing, uh, it's pretty similar to what uh, Selenium does with the um, with the mirrored assets, let's say, or synthetic assets. Um, when you build a over collateralized debt position, what can happen is that um, 
your collateral is not sufficient to cover the loan anymore. Um, and what then happens in traditional finance is that your broker, like if you do futures and Binance, then it's Binance uh, market makers, or if you do stocks trading with your broker with leverage, then it's your broker. Somebody's going to come in and liquidate your assets. Uh, and with decentralized lending, borrowing protocols, the, the beautiful thing is that uh, it's actually up to the community to come and liquidate those assets. And liquidating basically means that you bid on the collateral and are able to buy it with discount. So that's the third uh, possible way of making money with jurors. Once the lending is up, uh, you can bid on liquidations, meaning that, for example, if somebody has a loan based on Luna collateral, on Lung collateral, you will be able to go in and uh, bid on the Lung to get it cheap, let's say with 20% discount or 25%. Um, um, there is like, it's similar to setting limit orders, uh, limit buy orders on an order book. And then the liquidation queue is going to uh, start liquidating based on the bids. And that's basically, I think that's what Redline always says, it's basically risk-free money, more or less, if you are bidding on those assets, because you could go and sell them at the same time on a CEX or on Terraport pools if you want to, to market price. So that's the third way of making money. There's somebody that I met in the early days of Terra Classic. Um, or, yeah, just after the early days, let's say, a few months after. And they'd made millions from this um, in Luna 1. Um, they'd found a way to kind of automate it. Um, and yeah, and that was all about priority liquidating these loans that had expired. I think that was the terms they used. So I guess there's some massive opportunities there to earn a lot of money if you really know what you're doing and you've, uh, you're keeping an eye on these things. Mm, yes, I think so. There is like lots of opportunity. Like there is uh, opportunities for everybody. If you're like very conservative, then you just go and lend out the assets. Um, if you're even more conservative, you just uh, sit on your uh, Juris stake tokens, I guess, uh, or do a combination of both. If you're super DJ and you can go and uh, basically trade with leverage on chain. Uh, and uh, our protocol will allow to do it both sides. So with Anchor, you could only do, uh, basically you could go long on your collateral on Luna. Where with us, you can go long and short, have like multi basket, like different types of collateral, um, do more positions. But at the end, you can do super degen and I think up to two, two X leverage uh, going long or short. So, so when you say leverage, could you just um, explain that? What, what you actually mean by leverage? Uh, I can, but maybe Rocco wants to, because that's, I think, his uh, <laughs> expertise as a DGEN trader. Do you want to, Rocco? Sorry, what was your question, Rexy? Oh, that's it. We put him to sleep, haven't we? <laughs> I thought you were taking taking over my spaces. <laughs> <laughs> you just questioned your grilling LL69. Hey, look, I'm, I'm flying the flag for the idiot saying. Um, and those of us amongst us that maybe, you know, um, enjoy a bit of more simplified terminology. But, um, yeah, I mean, it all sounds absolutely fantastic. But, yeah, I was, I was just kind of, you know, thinking a bit more from those entry-level people that are new into crypto or those of us that have been into crypto a long time, but we've just never had the time to really kind of study the, the technical terms. Um, so, so could you explain to us what leverage trading really means? So, leverage, so it's basically you put a collateral on just to, to speak very simply. So let's say you want to take a bigger position. So you have a hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin, um, but you want to be able to trade with more funds. So then you can borrow money from the exchange. So there's different types of leverage tokens. So there's like inverse on BitMEX, there's like the futures, there's margin trading. Uh, they all work slightly differently. But in simple terms, you basically borrow capital and take a bigger position. So let's say you have a hundred dollars but you want to buy you have to you want to 10x your trade. Um you borrow capital and you buy a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. But the risk is you you could get liquidated because if you don't have enough uh, collateral in that position, uh, you just lose your lose what you have. Um, so it's super degen. Um, for newbie advice, I'd say in a bull market, you can just look to buy dips, buy breakouts, do it through spots. If you really want to grow it, play it with you know one k, ten k, and 
two key things to remember is know where your stop loss is and stick to it so you don't get your account liquidated um, and know like your profit targets as well. So how much are you risking, whether you're doing 2x, 5x, 100x, what is how much actual money are you going to lose if your stop loss gets hit? Um, and then okay. yeah, just DJ as much as you want. Okay, so t so just to try to um, to get my head around this then. Um, let's assume, using your example, I want to buy a thousand dollars worth of. Did you say Bitcoin? Well, well, let's say Lunk. I mean, nobody wants Bitcoin. Okay. They all, they all, <laughs> don't they? Come on, it's terror classic. Um, <laughs> so, I go to a protocol or Binance or somewhere other, and I want to do leverage trading on Lunk, and I want to buy a thousand dollars of it, but I've only actually got a hundred dollars. Okay, you know the tips haven't been very good this weekend. Let's say, so I can take my hundred dollars. And I could say, hey, up, Mr. Juris, I want you to lend me a thousand dollars to trade, but I've only got a hundred dollars. So um, will you lend me a thousand dollars? And as soon as I can't afford to pay you back, then you liquidate that hundred dollars. Is it something like that? On on Juris, I mean, I'm not. Ello can explain how the liquidation is going to work on Juris, but yeah. So if you're borrowing it, your stop loss is going to be huge. So I mean, uh, even like a ten, five, ten percent move could mean your collateral is at risk and you could get liquidated. Um, Ello, six and uh, how's going to work okay. for? So do I? I borrow that thousand dollars based on me giving up a hundred dollars. That's my collateral, and if yeah. that thousand dollars goes down to ninety percent of its value, then in effect it's only worth nine hundred dollars. So therefore, my hundred dollars worth of capital you get liquid on a ten x on a ten x margin. It depends on how much margin, uh, yeah. how much. But if, uh, but if it goes the other way and my thousand dollars goes up a hundred x. That, sorry, um, goes up 100%, so it becomes $2,000, then when I cash that out, I just need to pay my original amount off that I borrowed, which was $1,000, and then I've, through leverage, I've turned my $100 into $1,000. Um, on uh, uh, I don't, uh, LL6 can explain Jewish, but for BitMEX or Binance, you also have like funding rates, so you have to pay your the uh, basically interest rate or funding rate um, on the borrowed money. I think the uh, I don't know what the right um, what the funding limits are now, but they always change um, the crypto futures funding rate. So you have to pay the interest rates of funding rate on top on the borrowed money, and then you make that money after. Okay, so is this the same as what's in the Terra Casino as well? Because that does um, kind of futures trading through like a betting front end, I think. I think Terra Casino, and the, the, the concept is the same. Like you're borrowing money, your, your stop loss is going to be super tight. You could lose your collateral. Um, I, don't, I don't know the exactly the technicals behind how Terra Casino work. It would be similar to... Um, one of the ones you know it could be just futures it could be margin it could be um the inverse my understanding would be for terror casino it'd be margin um where you just put a collateral and if it goes your way you just lose what you've put on yeah i think that's that's my understanding of it i know it pays out hundreds of thousands of dollars a month um if not millions on that um on that functionality so somebody's doing all right out of it how I mean a question for Edel then how is the liquidation gonna work for Juris? Uh okay, so first of all, uh, I want to correct something for, for on-chain, uh borrowing and lending. Usually you have over collateralized loans, so it's a little bit different than Binance futures because they give you like 10x leverage. So uh, you have like it's similar, but you have um less collateral than what you borrow, um kind of. Uh, with Juris uh, or with Anchor or RV or uh, Compound, any any of those, it's over collateralized. Meaning you have to, for example, uh, to borrow thousand dollars, you have to put up, uh, example, two thousand dollars worth of collateral assets. Um, <clears throat> the I think the the, the term in, for this in TradFi is called Lombard credit uh, or Lombard loans. Um, so you can look that up if you want to. Um, there is a metric called loan to value, 
Um, so in this example, if you have two thousand dollars of collateral, and then you deposit, uh, you borrow a thousand dollars. Your loan to value initially is fifty percent because your loan ratio to your collateral value is fifty percent. Um, and liquidation works in a way where um, uh, the liquidation uh, module or whatever you want to call it is going to constantly monitor your position and the uh, loan to value ratio and at a predefined uh, rate uh, i'm not sure how much it is that's like more for frag to to figure out what is healthy or what's not uh, probably redline also knows better than me but uh let's say at 100 percent, it's already too late because then the protocol basically starts to 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 uh, to get in bad debt so uh, 100 percent means that your collateral is one-to-one -one, um with the loan so if you have uh, two thousand dollars collateral and it starts shrinking in value and uh, you borrow thousand uh, dollars worth of something um, at the point at a certain point in time when the collateral value starts to uh, move up to uh, move towards thousand dollars in this example uh, probably before that like let's say a thousand two hundred dollars or so your collateral is going to be uh, marked for like liquidation so that it can be liquidated and then usually how the protocols work is that uh, people are able to bid on that collateral so that you can make bids like uh, similar to limit buy orders um, and you can choose a certain discount that you want because uh, if the collateral is worth like uh, I don't know 2000 oh, no it's like thousand two hundred dollars in this example you can probably bid to buy it for thousand one hundred dollars if that makes sense that's like hundred dollar risk-free profit but then uh, once the collateral becomes uh eligible for liquidation there's like a mechanism that starts to go through all the bids and basically liquidate um and it's like first come first serve uh as far as i know and it's based on the uh on the ladder so like if you the more discount you choose the less likely it is for you to actually be able to liquidate because there's people that will probably take a little bit less discount than you take for example if you place a 20 percent discount somebody may say hey i'm bidding for the same collateral and i'm willing to buy it for 18 percent discount if that makes sense so it's like a liquidation queue that gets uh, uh, so this this is a bit like um let's say i've got a house and I'll, i call my house bitcoin for argument's sake um and my house, just to keep the math simple, let's say it's worth um, a million dollars. Um, it's, it's a nice sized house, let's, let's imagine. Uh, <laughs> uh, so my house is worth a million dollars, but I want to actually release some of the value of it so that I can actually get into crypto, I can you know make some really good investments and I can make money out of that. Because while I've got my house, I've got my finances locked up. So using juris as a lending protocol i would say hey up i'm going to put my house up as collateral and i don't expect you to give me the full value of the house because there's extra risk there but maybe if you give me 50 percent of the value of the house then i can go and i can invest in that and providing i can always pay you back then you would always be able to release the capital from my house so that i'd keep it is it is that type of thing isn't it yes it's exactly that type of thing and liquidation basically means that you cannot uh, like let's say there was a house uh, housing crash and uh, your collateral like the house is not going to be like worth uh, one million anymore but uh, it's going to be worth i don't know like it's unlikely with real estate, but let's just assume it falls like 50, 60, 70 percent in value. And you cannot come up with more collateral because you don't own a second house. Uh, then at that point in time, people will be allowed by the bank to bid on your house more or less. It's pro probably the same thing. Um, so, so it's near like a mortgage, mortgaging protocol then, isn't it? So, now, to give you an example of this, quite a few years, about 20 years ago, um, in one of my um, drinking kind of fueled 
um, times of my life, I came up with a few ideas. And one of the ideas was that I was going to remortgage my house, and I did do. And my house back then was worth, oh, I don't know, something like about £140,000. And my mortgage was worth about 50000 And what I did was I extended my mortgage to 90000 So I borrowed an extra £40,000. And I bought some land with that. Partly some of the kids could be kids. We had zip lines on there. There was woodland lakes it was uh, it's bit i'm a real naturalist and ecologist and so on and uh i've got some lakes that eutrophicated and i wanted to clean them up and things like that and that 40 grand that i put into there i thought would be a good investment because i thought in time it could be in value and it's probably worth about a million dollar million pound now um but i like to go down there and make a campfire and cook sausages so i've not actually <laughs> managed to realize it but you know it's um, it's great for my mental health. So that effectively is me through traditional finance doing what you've created through decentralized finance. Whereas apart from me putting my house up as collateral, I could put up maybe Lunk as collateral and then invest in some of Nicholas's food token and hope that that does really well. It's, it's that type of thing, isn't it? Yes, exactly. It's that type of thing. and. Uh... Like usually what you try to do, uh, like unless you go super degen, because there is also like looping strategies and like um, more degenerate stuff. But usually you try to have collateral that's like pretty stable, like, for example, Bitcoin or in crypto terms, I guess, lung counts too <laughs> for short term credits. Um, so you would like mortgage your lung more or less. Uh, put it up as collateral or your Bitcoin, for example, or your PAX is gold. Like with gold, it would also work because we have uh, like on-chain uh, gold representation with PAXOS, uh, which Nick was mentioned by Nicholas. Um, so yeah, it's the same thing, basically. It's uh, very cool because there is no intermediary. Like you don't have to go to your bank or to your broker and uh, ask them for a credit line. It gives you a credit line by default, just by owning crypto. That's what I like about it. That, that's cool. So, sorry, I'm stealing your spaces here, um, Rocco. Um, could you just explain the the link between Juris yeah. and, what, and when, it, when it was Anchor? Um, because I, I think Anchor, wasn't it partly responsible for taking Luna 1 from a few cents in value up to $119? Could we experience that again? um well yes um it kind of was responsible like the main responsible was USTC or ust the uh, dollar stable coin um but for USTC to be desirable to hold um you usually need uh, a way of making uh, making money on it making profit on it and anchor was basically the mechanism that uh, that allowed people to deposit ust into lending pools so that others can put up Luna collateral, um, now Lang, um, and borrow uh, UST with it. And what uh, what Anchor did is basically giving a 20% fixed APR, which in hindsight was not respons uh, sustainable, but anyways, what it caused was a constant buy pressure for UST, which then caused people to actually use the market module to to you know mint uh new ust whenever the the pack was a little bit down because it meant you could get discounted uh, ust that was usually worth one dollar deposit into anchor and get 20 percent uh <laughs> risk-free interest that's how it was called at that time because it was pretty stable and like safe or people assumed it was safe at that time uh, which boosted then the complete ecosystem up to I think couple uh, was it hundred billion dollars and uh, Luna price two hundred twenty uh, dollars. So that's mm -hmm. that that's where the connection was. And uh, like obviously we will not be able to uh, uh, to pump USD up to one dollar just by having it available again. Uh, but basically it gives UST a or USTC now um, a use case again that people uh, a reason for people to actually buy it and use it, you know, because you can uh, lend it out to people um, at one go long or short. 
um, use it for other purposes, whatever, and make money on it. Hopefully, causes demand together with Selenium because I thought they also use UST as collateral for something. Yeah, that's that's really interesting, isn't it? So, so kind of in a nutshell, I mean, there's there's often talk about uh, USTC repeg, if you like, to a dollar. However, I guess if you've got demand for USTC, regardless of what it's pegged at, you've then got demand where we could then maybe turn on the market module again, use USTC pegged at whatever it maybe is now. It could be two cents, it could be one cent. And then once you've got that demand there, because there's no point having a, a pegged USTC unless you've got demand to use it. So by having Juris protocol as a lending protocol, Selenium in terms of providing its synthetic assets, and then Terraport and TerraSwap and all the other DEXs that we've got, um, if they've got sufficient liquidity so that people can actually do some proper degen trading and generate kind of growth in the, let's say, the memes and other kind of projects on chain, then you're starting to get an ecosystem that's self-sustaining um, and can generate real growth and, and value and, and also burn a shitload of lump. Have I kind of got that understanding right? Um, <laughs> I don't want to say yes, because um, I'm not like in the quant team or something. So I don't know about turning on the market module as is. But um, what I would agree with is that for any sort of repack to happen, you need you certainly need demand. Like demand means people buying it. There is no even in the old uh, like lunar system. I think misconception that people have, and even though I'm not a quant, uh, I think I dare to say that I at least have the understanding or the the the, the brains to to understand that um, the market module itself is nothing magical that like creates demand or like packs something uh, through some magic, you know, on chain or code or whatever. The only thing it allows is people to uh, to bid on undervalued UST, more or less. So there was obviously there was like burn and mint mechanism, but there was nothing magical about it. Uh, and if there was no demand for UST, then it wouldn't have worked anyways. So we cannot get something uh, to like, you cannot pack something to any value without demand for it. Like if there is nobody bidding, like buying, there is no reason for a pack to be sustained and it cannot be done by magic or just by hoping or by code, you know what I mean? So uh, in my opinion, it's it's even more important to have demand and like use cases and stuff so that people are actually willing to bid on UST. Like, and then whatever you mech mechanism you have to support the pack, to make it possible to pack, um, it's good to have, like uh, it's required, I guess, unless you have a central uh, market maker that like always bids. But at the end, you need people bidding too, because otherwise there is no liquidity. There is no reason to hold. If there is no reason to hold, how should a pack be sustained? Um, so yeah, I would partially agree, I think. I thought so. A kind of worked example could be that I've got, I don't know, let's say a billion, a billion lunk. And I kind of put that into Juris. And with that, I want to borrow um, a billion lunks worth of USTC, whatever that's worth. What's that, about $10,000, something like that, whatever it's worth anyway. Um, and then that USTC, I think, do you know what? I'm going to use Selenium and I'm going to buy some of their synthetic gold because I think gold's going to go up in value. And then if gold goes up in value, I can then let's say it goes up 10% for argument's sake. I sell out of that gold and then I've made an extra 10%, which I've got in USTC because USTC is now a fixed value, whether that's on an individual coin basis based on one cent, one dollar, whatever it may be. And then I can think, okay, I've made my 10% here. I can then go back and um, pay you for the loan that I've had. Um, and then we're, we're back into just regular kind of crypto trading with Lunk again. It's that type of thing, isn't it? Uh, I think so. Yes, we've got we've got kind of like I say we've got demand because we've got use cases and we've got use cases that most people should be able to 
eventually get their head around that they can actually use to make money. Um, because if you've got USTC as a stable um, uh, store of value, at whatever it's pegged at, then you've got a, um, a foundation to so that you can trade within the ecosystem rather than actually hoping that what you've bought into isn't too volatile. So at the minute, within something like Terraport, my understanding is that you can trade between, let's say, Lunken food or Lunken terror or terror and something else, but the thing you're trading from isn't stable. It's got a certain amount of volatility. But if you've got that stable foundation, then you can start to actually um, do proper kind of investing. Does that sound about right? That sounds right to me. I, I think that we're forgetting one major wild card in USDC. It's the outstanding tokens that are off chain. You know, if we had all the USDC on chain and we were to relaunch market module then it wouldn't be an issue because we know where the outstanding supply is and we know how the module is going to uh, uh, act as people buy and sell right the, the problem right now is that it, if we turn it on we have you know billions of tokens that are on other exchanges and then come and destabilize the peg and that's where it becomes an issue so that's why i think a protocol like this that recalls usdc on chain is the way to go kind of like the idea with with cookie and actually gave me the idea that we can even over collateralize or at least adjust our stable coin by using your protocol you know just being on here gave me that idea that we can we can actually stabilize and protect you know our, our, our gold peg stable coin within your protocol by having like let's say a, a, a margin that is just uh, is borrowed and, and repurchased just to be used to to create as an extra buffer, right? An extra layer of security, and kind of like a, 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 a credit line, right? <laughs> so, uh, so that'd be cool. That'd be very cool. I really appreciate what you guys are doing. It's awesome. Awesome work. Yeah, I'm not. Um, I'm not kind of suggesting the. Um, any kind of a technical approach to how to go about repegging. So I was kind of, I'm thinking more in terms of the pure principles. Um, and of course, we've got all the stables on chain that maybe need far less in terms of um, providing kind of capital for, you know, like EUTC and, and you know, many of these smaller ones. Maybe that's the, the way to go. But uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's really interesting stuff, isn't it? I pr appreciate your time and explain it to us, um, Juris, as well. No worries. It's uh, always interesting to talk about this. Um, and I'm happy that you asked the questions because it also gives us um, opportunity to explain to the community maybe more in general terms what we're actually building because I don't think most of the people understand like in full uh, what it is. Like everybody understands it's cool and uh, want to be part of it. But I think that helped lots of people to understand what it can actually achieve. <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate that. And, uh, and also, we can all make mistakes. I mean, as um, Trader said at the start of this uh, space is, you know, I think he kind of slipped up with his phantom wallet or something or other. So it doesn't matter how experienced you are, mistakes can happen. And I think, you know, just looking at the audience, so, I mean, I think I've seen that DJ Trev, I think he's had a, a kind of slip up with a something like that in the past. I know Believes has. Um, I'm I'm looking myself that I've not, I'm not kind of slipped up like that, but um, I, th I suspect my time's coming at some point. Oh, don't bring karma, Rexy, don't say that. Um, yeah, uh, people that are listening, I'd say, yeah, make sure you've backed up your wallet. Don't click on random apps. Uh, if you've got, you know, big five, six figures, um, seven figures, make sure you've got like hardware wallet. Um, don't leave it in a random exchange. Um, all the stuff that you can do to protect yourself, make sure you protect yourself. Um, if it was on my bigger wallet, I would have, I mean, I'm still, it's affected me a lot this week. Um, but yeah, make sure you do everything you can um, to protect yourself. Yeah, I'm still hesitant about upgrading to Windows 3.1. <laughs> um yeah it's quite um yeah not been a not been a good week but um no so we talked about juris um anything you want to anything else you want to talk about rexy for terra port terra casino uh i appreciate it thank you it's um 
Okay, uh, you mentioned this, this. You mentioned quite a few things. You, you're really great at uh, you know kind of summarising you know what's gone on over the week. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's really good how you go about that. So um, trying to kind of recall a few of those and pick up a few things that you said. Um, Hexagon wallet. Um, yeah, they um, they made uh, an upgrade or repaired a bug or something um, over this last week or so, where the Terra token, when you did a search, um, it wasn't it wasn't identified, and you know that's been addressed now, and it's uh, it's something we discussed from quite some months ago, but it's great to see that done, and we're within the Terraport app, we're looking to integrate Hexagon within that app or um, a galaxy station wallet if you like i think penciled in somewhere around about the end of the month but it depends on the uh it depends on everything else we've got on in the roadmap and um and everything else running smoothly so uh, you know that should that should help with um you know integrating you know the people to be able to you know use use terraport that may be kind of struggling um so that's great um I've kind of heard that the uh, that the Selenium um, application is kind of on track, and I think the uh, the current launch pad that's on Terraport for Selenium, I think that's that's doing pretty well. I think there's a few people that have um, well, there's a hell of a amount of people that have got involved in that, and uh, I think at times some pe sometimes the um, the data on it just takes a bit of time to just catch up. So um you know if people have kind of logged on and you know the figures aren't quite where they need to be i think you know if they just give it you know half an hour or so i think you'll uh i think that'll kind of catch up actually um, on that one rexy i had a dm as well um someone said he owns i think is it ten thousand terra you have to own they've bought terra um i think myself and you've posted it um and then it, on their wallet maybe i'll forward that screenshot onto you and um, they can't it doesn't say that they've got ten thousand so on their wallet on the kepler wallet they have ten thousand terra they've bought it through i think terraport or coin hall and hmm. but then on the on the selenium terraport it says that he only owns about three thousand instead of ten thousand that he owns and um, okay i mean it'll all depend on the individual circumstances and you know i'd, I'd say the first that is to go into the selenium kind of tg and just kind of raise that as an issue but i had that myself at one point and i think it was the first time i'd logged on with a particular wallet because i had lots of wallets um as part of my security strategy if you like and i think because i'd only logged on with that particular wallet at that time it hadn't registered the i guess it hadn't scoured the, the blockchain or something like that and kind of registered that that was what was in that wallet I'm, I'm not quite sure the technical you know aspects behind it um but i know when i logged on again a few hours later it kind of showed up so i don't know if it's that kind of issue uh, yeah i'll i'll get tell him to get in touch with the selenium team yeah so um yeah um but yeah you mentioned you also mentioned about uh, like i said the cmc um and we've been working with vegas i think vegas is um i think he's somehow connected to selenium now and i think he's helping him with marketing or something like that. so that's so that's absolutely fantastic because you know vegas has got a you know quite a large community that follows him and if he's kind of supporting kind of builders on chain then that's i think that's that's really kind of bullish for for selenium um also in terms of, let's say cmc i did say this at the start uh we've been working with vegas to get terra ports and terra token so so terra token is actually called terra port i know that's a bit confusing so terra port as a token that should get registered on cmc soon hopefully um through like say some assistance with vegas but also terraport as the application as the dex and if we can get that registered on cmc and actually enable people to comment on it and that should really help with marketing which then helps with everybody else that's got a token that's traded through terraport as well because as i've said this many many times um, and i was actually kind of pulled up for this that I maybe didn't market Terraport enough. Um, some people might find that hard to believe, but um, I, I had, you know, I was, I was kind of, you know, dragged through the the long grass on that one a few times. And I, my response was, 
if you think of Cherryport like a shop, you don't go and market a shop. You market the products that are in the shop because it's the products that people go to buy. And so therefore, all the tokens and all the projects are launched on Terraport, they're the things that help give it volume. Um, and from that volume, that trading helps generate fees. And those fees help generate returns for people that own Terra. So, you know, everybody's a winner. Um, you know, so, you know, if we can get food token to 100x, well, that's going to generate a hell of a lot of volume, isn't it? And help a lot of people around the world as well. And whether that's Terra token, GRD, um, you know, whatever it is that's on there, you know, Alpha for argument's sake, you know, it's, you know, the uh, the better every token can do, the better it is for Terraport and we ecosystem. So, so that would be great there. Um, also, I've been contacted by CoinDesk. They want to do an article on. Um, uh, it seems to be my kind of involvement within the ecosystem, and you know, and if that actually does come off. Because um, I think they've got three million followers on Twitter. I mean, they seem to be, um, you know, pretty kind of popular. You know, hopefully we'll be able to get as much, you know, kind of include as, I guess, include as many kind of other applications and groups within Terra Classic within that article, um, you know, to help the, the ecosystem. Because I think there's a lot of people out there that don't actually realize that Terra Classic is alive and kicking and it's been built on. Um, and if that helps bring, you know, um, all the outside interest into Terra Classic, you know, that, that's fantastic. So we'll see where that goes. Um, yeah, I think the I think that kind of sums a lot of it up. Uh, you forgot think, liquid staking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So the. Um, Yes, yeah, so the liquid staking on Terraport as well, um, that's going through different kind of versions. And the first version was that if you, um, that you could take your lunk and you could liquid stake it within the Terraport application, and then that, that lunk, it would turn into B lunk that you could then use as you wish you know invest in if you like but then you would get the returns from the lunk that you essentially um kind of locked away to get your b lunk and that lunk was then staked with the terraport validator and from the start the terraport team had asked for validators who wanted to sign up to this liquid staking so that when lunk was staked it would be shared equally amongst all those different kind of validators or you know and that that's how the um uh, the theory kind of went i think in the initial implementation of liquid staking there was a lot of pressure on the team to get it out and i think they had to take a i think they had to make a decision of do they hold back until they can get it fully developed or do they launch like a first version of it so the first version of it was that the liquid staking meant that the lunk was staked with Terraport. And this is why, you know, from a Terravita point of view, you know, it's, we've not marketed it a great deal because, you know, just putting my Terravita validator hat on, um, I seem to have quite a few different hats, don't I? But putting my validator hat on, you wouldn't want to market liquid staking and encourage people to unstake from your validator to stake with another validator i mean it's it's government's kind of suicide really isn't it and i wouldn't expect juris protocol validator um to do it or anybody else for that matter but i think that's been sorted out and i think within a few weeks um that will be addressed in the next release of terraport to enable people to encourage their own delegators to you know try out the liquid staking but also then they can restate back with the validator that's you know um that's done that and uh, and until that's kind of approved i mean i wouldn't recommend any validator to push it i mean it'd be you know a bit of a daft thing to do and, um, and i mentioned that as well in the spaces because i was when i was looking doing my research on the liquid staking um I mentioned that because if it's just Terraport, then other validators are losing out. So um, it's good that you guys are working on the update. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, there's, I think back in um, 
back when I used to deal with TFL and, and station quite a lot, they used to come out with this term regularly, you know, about iteration. And I think, you know, quite a few in this space talk about iterating where, you know, you've got your goal of where you want your project to be, but you need to take stepping stones before that. And as you get to the end of one sprint and you're moving on to the next one, rather than, you know, waiting until you get to the final product, people iterate out one, you know, kind of um one kind of a stage of it at a time. So it gradually gets to where you want to be, but you've got a, you know, uh, maybe not the full functionality, but you've got a kind of a working protocol. And that's pretty much Terraport's journey. And I think a lot of journeys there. And I suppose if you actually look at, you know, like um Elon Musk, um, Elon Musk, I think, takes this approach in terms of his rocketry. You know, he just creates a new rocket and he launches it and he sees how it goes and he uses that as a, a way to test all the components within him. Um, whereas NASA took a completely different approach which is why they've probably been left behind, um, that they, they you know, massively tested each individual component um, until every component had been tested, and then they put them all together, and then they started to see how those components test, you know, um, perform kind of together. So, the, you know, there's, you know, pros and cons to different approaches from, I guess, an iterative kind of approach. It may mean that, the final product in terms of a particular version might not have all the functionality that you hoped it would have, um, but it means it's released a little bit earlier. Um, and that will be disappointing for some people, but it will be, you know, um, massively positive for some others. Yeah. And in terms of shilling validator, I know LL69 doesn't really show the jury's validator, or I don't show the jury's validator. Um, if you want to, if you enjoy what we do, if you want to support us, um, do stake some with jury's validator. It also helps uh, buy back and burning jurors. Um, if you want the price of jurors to go up, if you're a jury's bag holder, um, do support us. I think with the last 30 minutes or so, we'll, sorry, Rex, did you want to add anything? Yeah, I was just, just going to say it's. Um... I, I mean, I don't really show Terravita validator much either. And it's and part of the reason is, is I've kind of been led to feel guilty for talking about your own validator. And, um, you know, I, I'm quite a kind of modest person, really. And I'm, I'm actually real private. But I absolutely hate things like Facebook. Um, and I didn't used to use Twitter until I got into bloody crypto. I used to actually have a, a, um, a bonus that was related to my salary in terms of using social media. And I had a chief exec that says, look, you've got to start using Twitter. And I thought, oh my God, you know, I'd rather leave the company. Um, so I didn't get much of a bonus ever for Twitter because I never, I set up an account and left it. Um, so, you know, it's, I've kind of had to take to this. I'll not say I've took to it like a duck to water, maybe more like a stone to water. I don't know. But um, uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't, um, really promote TerraVita as a validator a great deal. Yet I've just been working on the uh, the accounts with our accountant and in the year 23 to 24, um, TerraVita as an organization spent $243,000 on supporting the ecosystem. Um, and this is nothing to do with Terra Casino. This is just what was paid out um through the you know through the validator well not through the validator company through terravita as a company um so you know it's i know a lot of people talk about how they use their validator to invest in terra classic to help it out well yeah you know it's um we'll, we'll soon have the accounts to kind of prove it cool and um, we'll open up uh, for some questions for the last half an hour. LL69, you want to add anything before we open up for questions? Mm, no, I don't think so. I think we talked about everything. Um, unless I forgot, but I guess uh, uh, some people are going to remind me about it. Um, maybe I can show you one more thing that's going on in Terra Classic. I found it quite amusing. Well, somebody in the community, and I'm not going to say uh, who it is even if i knew like uh, i didn't even say that i knew but uh somebody's uh, creating these fun podcasts like ai driven podcasts and i and listened to some of the episodes i enjoyed them Can you um, guys hear ll69 or is it just me yeah i can hear him can you hear me 
Uh, I can hear Rexy and uh, Rocco. Hello. Yeah, I'm here too. I'm just uh, walking in the woods, so <laughs> I'm just muted and listening to you guys. <laughs> I couldn't hear. I can't hear L six nine. Is it? I can hear you, Nicholas. Can you, you guys hear L six nine? I can hear Trader. I can hear yeah. everyone. Yeah, Jewish, you have to leave and come back, mate. Okay. Right. Oh, hmm. That's odd one, isn't it? Okay, we'll open up to questions then. And Nicholas, I know we've already touched on what you're building. Um, have you guys got a question for us or have you guys want to share anything else? Are you still there, Nicholas? Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, so we have, we also have uh, 200 unique uh, NFTs that are out right now. And we are actually going to be sharing uh half a percent of our of our trading fees forever so that's uh with these 200 nft owners so this is a fun nft project that we brought and that's bringing utility as well you know and uh, some of the mint fees are being utilized for liquidity pool and purchasing gold and uh some other are going to the cookie bank uh, we are creating kind of like a little cookie bank where we're, we're, we're buying a bunch of the layer two projects and we're staking the coins away and so we're going to be, you know, just uh, on Garuda DeFi. I don't know if you guys seen their platform. They also have a nice platform for staking. It's very, uh, it's similar to Terraport, but different. You know, I, I think uh, they uh, complement each other very well. Uh, but uh, uh, it's a way to, uh, you know, you have passive income and a way to, you know, go and cash out your tokens. You know, so they've done a good job with that. The central tokens listed there. I think or two tokens and earn away I, I feel like a lot of these project meme coins and all these things sometimes they you know they're like long-term projects and if you're able to hold them for like a year or so you can make some nice coins with it so it's kind of like the mentality when i on this cookie bank we we're purchasing purchasing some of these tokens and we're locking them away and we're just leaving them there for a couple of years and letting them grow you know and at the same time it's contributing to you know on-chain volume and and uh supporting other uh layer two projects because we're purchasing their tokens so yeah, that's uh, we've got more stuff, but this is uh, the gist of it. <laughs> cool, thanks for the update, mate. Um, Jervis, can you speak now? I can try to. Yes, <laughs> can can you, you? yes, go ahead. Uh, it, your voice went all robotic, so. But oh, I can okay. you know. That's his real voice. <laughs> okay, so yeah, what I, I want to is that yeah, yeah, well. <laughs> I was trying to share uh, some community members' uh, project. I think he's listening. Uh, I wanted to share classic chaos podcasts. I listened to some of the episodes. Uh, they're quite fun. Um, I think uh, sometimes critical of certain uh, projects or comments of other people. But um, uh, I think it's fun regardless. And I always want to support community members' uh, projects. Everyone who remembers Lankcast knows that uh, uh, those things are quite fun to listen or watch. Um, so I would recommend everybody to go and check it out. Um, I didn't watch all the or listen to all the episodes, but I think it was pretty cool. Um, and I think it's AI made. So uh, yeah, most of David, the made DM'd by AI. David DM'd me some of them. It is pretty funny. Um, I listened to a couple. Yeah, so uh, I wanted to just mention it to give uh, the person who creates them. I don't know who it is, by the way, but I wanted to give him uh, a little bit of credit, maybe some followers from the community. And uh, there is no, uh, okay. um, there is no Juris episode yet, so maybe uh, maybe we're lucky that there wasn't one yet. But uh, possibly at some point uh, we are going to also get one dedicated to us. So I say that again. I couldn't hear you. I said there is no Juris episode yet, but uh, maybe at some point we're going to get one, and I hope it's uh, going to be uh, uh, not that negative, or at least uh, fun. <laughs> no, that's that's good. Um, okay, I can see a few other people here as well. Redline, DJ, Boss Fam uh, from Vault Community, and a few other people that are here. If you guys want to come up and ask questions, uh, we'll be here for another 20 minutes or so. Okay, we'll go to the next uh, person, Lunk Market, and then we'll go to MK911. Lunk Market, go ahead, mate. Hello, very good evening, everyone. How are you guys doing? 
Uh, can everyone hear me? Yeah, yeah very yeah. good, yes, man. Yes, we can. Yeah. I'm here today not to talk about Lunk Market. Um, I want to come over today to talk a bit about, about uh, Garuda, as they are not here. Um, Garuda has been building on chain since the crash, actually. And I want to highlight some things that they have done so far with the Garuda DeFi. So as Nicolas said, they had a staking for CW20 tokens at the moment, where you can earn more tokens once you stake and lock them out. They have done the NFT staking, which is quite nice. Still work to be done because not working very probably, but it's there. Uh, hybrid, hybrid staking is online where you can stake LUNC and get rewarded with LUNC USDC and CW tokens. This already all be done. But the big news now is that they are opening the DEX. So uh, you can now, if you want, you can be a supporter to build this DEX and be like a stakeholder. Uh, what does it mean? It means you can buy DX token, is how they put the name, Garuda DX. And once you do that, if you buy, for example, let me open here, uh, hold the rank. So they had like a, a rank. So if you buy, no, oh, doesn't want to, to load. Now, now it's there. So you have, for example, six categories where you're going to be able to be filled in. It's like a shrimp, a crab, a fish, dolphin, shark, or whales. So if you buy from 100k to 500k GDX, you'll be a shrimp, for example. And then you're going to get back a percentage from the trading fees once the DX is open. So this is a way that for them to collect uh, money, let's say them, to build up the pools and the people helping building these pools they're going to get rewarded with the trading fees which means for example um a shrimp a shrimp gets like 0.1 percent shares a crab 0.2 a fish 0.42 dolphin 1.1 percent shares shark 2.3 and whales 4.7 so I find it quite nice and it's something that's coming into Lunk soon and I wanted to share with all of you because uh, the GDX token is now for sale. It costs 10 Lunk per unit, but only until tomorrow and then it's going to rise 5% and every three days it's going to be rising 5%. So to help people to hurry a bit up and say like, okay, let's buy early and enjoy later the benefits on having the shares with this uh, Garuda DEX that's coming. Yeah, this was my point. Um, I want to thank so also the other ones that building. It's quite nice. Terraport, uh, Juris, Effergy, and many other people here building. That's quite amazing. Uh, any questions or suggestions or... I spoke to um, uh, Renzo about this um, oh, over the last few days, and uh, I think it's fantastic that you know Gruder's you know building a Dex and everything that they do. I mean, they you know they get involved with the uh, you know a lot of different things, which is great. I mean, they've got Big Bang X as well, haven't they? As a NFT marketplace. Uh, but what my, my conversation I was having with Renzo was um, something that you know I, that I fund um, is marketing for projects that are building on Terra Classic. And um, so for instance, I pay Believes to cover, uh, a, to kind of provide a, a window onto the YouTube world, if you like, for every project. And I notice, you know, some projects don't seem to, you know, make a make much of that. And I think, you know, this is, you can have unlimited marketing with him. He'll make as many videos as what you can provide, it, um, you know, material for. And I think, you know, people, uh, sorry, the team like Garrett Garuda and also others. I mean, I'd suggest you know make more use of that. Um, you know, publicise yourself more and get um, get your get your name out there so people you know other than the Terra Classic community 
can hear about what you're doing. Yeah, I agree with this. I'm trying to help with the long market uh, where I can. And today here in these spaces, um, because I told them I was going to come up and, and share a little bit. And but yeah, definitely marketing is uh, something that uh, has to be worked. Um, it's uh, where we can sell the business, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, fair, let's say fair play to Gruda for what they're doing and, and everybody else that's building and contributing. It's, uh, um, yeah, I I just think that they could probably put a bit, well, not not just, I'm not singling them out, you know, forgive me for that, I don't mean that, but um, I just think that we need to, you know, reach out to people beyond our community to kind of market what we're doing rather than marketing ourselves within the community that is what and um, is what it appears to me is what most projects seem to focus on um effectively you're just selling to the same customers you want to attract new customers and for that you've got to go where their new customers are you know go into the telegram groups go into the um x accounts and get involved in other ecosystems and get kind of trusted and engage with them and then you know then you can pull them back to your project that's how that's how you kind of expand yes i agree 100 percent um i just wanted to share here because uh, everyone shared it a little bit from their own projects uh, garuda is not my project but i just wanted to share here and make sure everybody on here knows it too that there's a possibility to be a stakeholder on garuda dex and if the volume comes up you know let's say i don't know but imagine one day trading one million dollars or something a day who knows if lunk goes up everyone everybody goes up together and that's opportunity you know and i want to share to everyone here so everyone can have a look into this opportunity and see if it fits to them or not but they, they 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 cannot say I missed it out because I didn't knew, but I agree. Yeah, we need to go out outside long too and bring more people inside our community and chain. It's hundred percent true. Well, the long cookie is going to be bridging over as many of these meme coins as we can. So start with the biggest ones. So hopefully that helps, and we are able to tap into some of their communities. And, you know, Lunk Market, speaking to yourself, you know, you don't really brag, but, you know, what Lunk Market's done is kind of give a place where you can go and kind of read up and see about all the different layer two tokens of the Luna Classic ecosystem. So, you know, you can just go on there and kind of scroll through all the projects and he's put all the links to Coin Hall and their white papers and all this stuff. So he's done a good job with that. I lift my hat up to you because we need this kind of stuff. And, uh, and yeah, so keep building. And, and I, I know what you guys are doing as well with Garuda, kind of like we're doing with cookies is we're working to have partners, right? And these partners become almost like your shillers, right? Just like you guys, Juris Protocol, you have a big team, you know, that are, that help you get the word across. So, you know, the reality of Luna Classic, it's that it's a global blockchain. We are, we got people from all over the world. You know, Garuda is based out of Indonesia. You know, we've got people literally everywhere around the world. So uh, let's make that our strength. You know, let's use let's, let's utilize that. We have the ability to be online 24-7, 365 days out of the year all the time. You know, so that's what we've been doing. And we've been working hand in hand with Garuda. They've done a lot of good stuff for us, for real. We love you guys. <laughs> yeah, I know, mate. That's really good to see working together with Evergy and the loop market and everyone together and yesterday came out i was driving my car and i just heard on the radio that here in switzerland one from every ninth person has a cryptocurrency on their telephone so <laughs> so that's not bad at all is it <laughs> We're certainly still at the start, aren't we? So I think anybody that's um, kind of aped into crypto at the minute, I think they've got a potentially healthy future ahead of them. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> cool, cool, guys. Um, right, we'll be going for another 10 minutes or so. If there's any questions come up, I think we've discussed covered everything in Luna Classic that we wanted to. So we're happy to take some questions. Let me actually look at some comments, you know, that might 
Uh, yeah, this is why you're looking at the comments there. So uh, something else that just occurred to me that I um, that I've kind of mentioned is is about the casino and the casino's Project Moon initiative, which is to um, try to kind of support tokens on Terra Classic um, by buying back and burning them. Um, and I think I think the casino is currently burnt. Uh, sorry, bought back four billion cat with hat at the minute um which it's burnt which is you know it's kind of massive commitment really um and that token i think has already kind of 10x if not a little bit more since the start of that um so yeah so you know hopefully that will go on to you know generate higher returns for that token which hopefully in turn will help convince people that terra classic is a good place to come to to make um you know kind of gains in the in kind of through crypto trading um and you know once once you know cat with hats maybe done another kind of 10 or 20x from where it is now you know we're, i think the casino is going to look to um go on and burn kind of other tokens as well and it's been talking with some of the um the project leaders in terra classic to to support them um so yeah so that's that's epic and i'm, I'm not sure whether this was related to this initiative but at the uh the start of November, there was some a massive kind of increase in the volume of usage on um, Terra Casino, and in the first few days of November, there was over four million paid out, four million dollars paid out in prize money. Um, you know, so the the potential there is absolutely massive. What we're seeing with meme coins, people love gambling. Um, I saw a post on Twitter the other day of how much money uh, Nasdaq makes compared to like how much money casinos in Macau makes or like uh, uh, China, I think, or Vegas makes. Um, so yeah, people love gambling. Um, and I've I've become a bit of like a meme coin disciple now, just reading and following some of the meme coin super cycle people. They, they're just all in on this sort of meme coin hype. Um, so yeah, Terra Casino could could play a big um, big role in burning more Luna Classics. It's already one of the top burners on Luna Classic. You know, I've partnered up with them trying to get them more volume. Um, this Moon Moon Coin thing was an initiative to help a meme coin, but also increase well more people finding out about Terra Casino. So if you guys have any ideas of how we can increase on chain volume for meme coins, um apart from you know me tweeting about it shilling it on spaces um project moon was one of rex's uh, ideas uh, one of his better ideas um if you guys have any other ideas do do reach out to us yeah just to put that into context in the first two days of november i think the casino generated enough um enough betting that the El the amount from that betting that's put towards buying back lunk and burning it i think was equivalent to 50 million lunk in two days um now that's gone into the project moon um because that's what um you know the community kind of you know kind of endorsed with entire casino but you know that's even that 50 million over a couple of days compared to some other of the sister casinos within the that are connected to it you know some of them generate i think probably 10 to 100 times that or would do um so you know if, if we could get tarot casino up to something like you know what probably sold casinos like or or stake.com i mean the amount that you'd be burning if that's your thing would be absolutely massive but also and this is something that i, I think we don't want to take for granted the casino helps contribute a hell of a lot to the ecosystem in terms of building. I mean, it sponsors a lot of projects. Um, it provides, um, uh, you know, money to fund kind of publicity initiatives and all sorts of stuff. So, you know, it's it's not something where the, the wealth of it is just kind of going to, you know, I guess a, a team somewhere. Um, and then that's been filtered off chain. You know, a massive amount is re reinvested. It's amazing how selfless a community can be, man. How 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 hard people work for the better of of Luna Classic. 
man. It's outstanding what you guys do. You know, you don't can't forget about all the utility you guys bring to other tokens by you know offering us the ability to farm our tokens, just, you know, and, and do all that all that stuff on your platform. You know, it, I, it's it's really it's a fun addition to to like earning uh, earning crypto and uh, and I, re I really really appreciate it. Terraport's done a lot, and honestly, it's it's unbelievable. Like people would rather hold a meme coin than hold a token like Terraport or Grudex or or Juris or like actually stuff that like has utility right and and i think the idea of how we bring utility to meme coins is we we, we try to give them utility right it's, it's what we're trying to do on luna classic is to build utility for, for to have something so the investors can come to and and do with their lunk once it goes to a dollar right <laughs> what if it goes to a dollar tomorrow and people are like okay what do i do with my lunk now there's nothing well okay i'll just sell it and then just move on right now <laughs> you just be another pump and dump now we're building all this stuff and now they have they have a home to come to they have stuff they can do they have ways they can earn you know we've we've added a play to earn game in the frg ecosystem you're killing zombies you're burning lunar classic and you're earning crypto you know oh this is the kind of stuff the more 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 of this stuff we build you know we're going to take care of supply ourselves it, now the reality is no one's going to save us i said this the other day nobody's going to fucking save us you know we got to do it ourselves it's the reality. We put our helmets on, go to work every single day, and we freaking grow this blockchain from the ground up because the reality is we're not Luna anymore. We're Luna Classic. The people own blockchain. Layer one blockchain in the world with 21 algorithmic stable coins. That's what we are. You know, and it's about damn time we start acting like it, <laughs> that we are the only people own blockchain. We're not owned by some somebody we don't know, like Satoshi Nakamoto. It's owned by every single one of us that's on this space. And that's our strength. And that's what we need to focus on. Focus on being united and focus on building every single day and just blocking the noise and keep moving forward. Do you know, I totally agree with you. And the um, and that is our strength, being decentralized. I mean, it's also a barrier in some ways, but I think that the important element is it's it's a massive um, massive strength as well. And I think I think if people kind of sit back and reflect on other people that they know within their lives um, that have been successful and that are maybe you know got a lot of wealth. The way to become wealthy, well, there's many ways to become wealthy, but what, what most wealthy people have as a kind of a, a, a common experience or common denominator, regardless how they generate that wealth, whether it's through investing business or whatever, they'll all have this common denominator that the the way to become wealthy is to solve problems so everybody that's become wealthy and successful over their time has come across problems and rather than sitting back and hoping somebody else will solve them and add value they've gone about solving them themselves and then problems might be in terms of holding on to the wealth providing security for themselves to be able to go forward um maybe um problems in terms of their career that they've managed to overcome so that's added value to them in terms of um the companies they've worked for and increased their salary it might be identifying you know tokens to invest problems with building projects whatever it may be and as terra classic we've had a barrel full of problems to overcome um and we're overcoming them and i think that and we're still here baby what's up <laughs> And that's and that's it. And as we manage to overcome all these problems, I think those of us that are still, you know, holding on to that bar and pushing it forward, I think then we'll have the the opportunity, if we got in early at pushing the barrow, um, you know, to have uh, a share in the kind of the rewards and the and the growth in that as well. Um, so you know, the other kind of moral to this is that as a community, each and every one of us can be part of that success and what you need to look at is that as an individual you might think well nobody's marketing terra classic well if you think like that nobody will be marketing terra classic but if you actually think actually i can go out and spread the word about terra classic and about what's actually going on in here then you've started to address a problem and if every one of us addresses those problems in terms of getting the the news out of there about us that we are alive and kicking and we might not be perfect we might not have the most developed ecosystem 
but we're on the way to it and there's a lot of people here that are really committed to it and you know every voice will be a voice that's you know singing the tune for tarot classic Um, well said, Rex. We'll, 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 we'll end it on this note then. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Jewis, you've just unmuted. Do you want to add anything? Yes, I want to add something. Um, I was told by uh, K Robs. Um, no, nope, that... he's not there. Well, no, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Go buy some Luna Classic. Go buy some Juris. Help our own project. Pump, pump, uh, Juris, pump our bags. Juris is actually here. I don't know if you can hear him. I can't hear him. No. Yeah, I could I... hear him speaking, and I think maybe other people could. It might be just you. All right, well, we'll let Juris speak and then Rexy let me know and then I'll do the... Well, do you know what? We'll let, we'll let Juris finish um, the spaces. I just want to say thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We'll give Juris a minute or so to end the note. But if you've uh, enjoyed the spaces, do support us. Do like and retweet. Follow Rexy, Nicholas, Juris, Lunk Markets, Redline, DJ, everyone that's here. Um, go pump our bags. Uh, go buy at least $1 worth of Juris. Go buy some terra port tokens uh food tokens um go bet hundred dollars on bitcoin going to 100k by end of the month that might pay you back um and yeah look after yourself thank you for tuning in we'll let juris speak and then rexy let me know and then i'll end the spaces go ahead juris all right thanks uh rocco even though you can't hear me thanks rexy for for uh pointing out to, to rocco um, I wanted to add something. I was told by somebody, uh, by Krox actually, that uh, Strathcall, he's still uh, looking for dApps or uh, developers or projects that uh, are live uh, on Terra Classic and that uh, want to uh, test the upcoming text to guess um, upgrade on Testnet, on Rebel 2 Testnet, I think. So I wanted to point this out to everyone. Uh, like, unfortunately, Juris is not online yet. We cannot participate, but everybody who has like working project, and maybe you can uh, be of help by just uh, putting your stuff up to the test net and um, making sure that uh, the text to guess upgrade is actually working uh, so that we can have it on the main net as soon as possible. Um, and since Rocco said I'm uh, the one who is going to enter space, I want to say thank you to everyone who participated uh, or listened. Uh, maybe one shout out to Hexagon, uh, our partners. Uh, shout out to Terraport, uh, which has also have been very supportive of us. Um, and thanks to everyone who supported Juris and uh, who's still holding Lang. I hope uh, we will have our time soon. Just, just before you close off there, um, uh, Juris, uh, could you just explain to people what the purpose of tax to gas is? Or sorry, what the reverse um, the reverse tax charge is and actually what the benefit to Terra, Terra Classic will be? Because it's something that's that could have a massive impact on the size of the ecosystem. Uh, yes, maybe if, uh, if that's okay with Rocco, I guess yes. Uh, I can give it one minute. So um, in summary, it's a different approach on how the on-chain tax is going to be charged. Um, not going into details, but it's uh, it's something that I think was brought up to Strathcall by Happy Catty Crypto, like a different idea on how to implement it. And it's more beneficial to the apps and the chain because it's backward compatible, meaning that uh, you can just use um, existing projects, uh, protocols, contracts as is, and you don't need to make any adjustments uh, to the code. And I think it solves some of the issues that you have uh, with double uh, taxing, double taxation and stuff when contracts are interacting with other contracts. So it's very beneficial for the chain, making stuff easier, making onboarding existing projects um, uh, to Terra Classic. So I think it's something that we all should support and the testing uh, results, as far as I'm concerned, seem to be pretty positive as well. So effectively you're saying that if somebody's built a project on um, another Cosmos chain or on Luna, that they can pretty much just deploy their application on Terra Classic into the Lunk ecosystem. I think uh, I, I'm not like a super blockchain dev, but I think that's more or less. You guys still carrying on? I can't hear anything. Yeah, it's still going on. Yeah, so I think it's going. Yeah, hello, still talking. Okay, so I think. Yeah, LL. <laughs> yeah, LL <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like, I think uh... <laughs> 
So last thing I'm going to say, I think what Rexy said is more or less correct. Um, I think that Strafcoin mentioned that he uh, uploaded the uh, Terra swap code, the old one, um, unmodified, and it seems to be working. Um, so yeah, I think what you said is pretty much uh, the case. So I'm looking forward to the upgrade, and I don't want to waste uh, Rocco's time anymore. Uh, hold Sorry. him back from uh, talking to his tigers. So I think we should wrap up now. <laughs> but that's but that's just fantastically bullish, isn't it? So effectively, we've got a massive community here that's got a load of money that they want to spend on projects and applications. And by getting this reverse tax charge sorted out, it then means that now we can actually welcome all the shops back to Tower Classic so that everybody in this massive community can actually start to use the blockchain as a commercial, you know, um, as a commercial chain, if you like. I think so. Yes, exactly. Well, that's massively bullish, isn't it? Um, fantastic. I appreciate your time explaining it as well. You're welcome. So uh, I think it's time to wrap up the space. Uh, and otherwise, my co-founder is going to be really mad at me. Uh, so maybe you should tell him that he can close up. And thanks, everyone, for listening. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see if I can wake him up again, and I'll tell him that we're done then. So uh, that's brilliant. And uh, you know, thank you uh, for anybody the can't hear trader. Um, Rocco, if you like, you know, just thank you for everybody for coming up and uh, and speaking and getting involved. It's it's what makes us great. Awesome. Thanks, Rexy. Thanks, Hello, Nicholas, everyone that's tuned in. We'll speak to you at the same time next Sunday. Take care, guys. Good night.